But first here, Attorney General Gettner Drummond has said enough is enough when it comes to Governor Kevin Stitt's fight with the tribes over gaming compacts. He sent a letter to the state saying he will be challenging the governor in a federal lawsuit. Political experts here in our state are breaking down what this means for citizens in our new Sunday morning segment, Your Vote Counts. And good morning. Welcome to Your Vote Counts with Leader Eccles, Jason Dunnington. I'm Scott Mitchell. Good to have you. Okay, you know that saying, what just happened? All right, let's talk about what's happening in the executive side of the government between the Attorney General and the Governor, these compacts. What just happened? Yeah, there's been a lot that's going on with the tribal compacts in the state ever since Governor Stitt got elected. What's happened this week is our Attorney General because he was asked by the Speaker of the House and the pro tem to get involved in this case, has now officially sent a letter to the governor saying that he's going to represent the state when it comes to the compact. Look, our state's already spent 600 some thousand dollars on east and west coast law firms in order to defend the state against the tribes in the tribal compact. Most of us citizens are just saying enough. Figure out a deal, get something done, and let's move forward. Our tribal citizens are Oklahoma citizens, and Oklahomans are often our tribal citizens. So let's just figure it out and move on. And I think that's what the attorney general is trying to do. Let me take, ask you to take your leader hat off, put your counselor hat on. Give us some analysis of what's happening here. Yeah, so here's the analysis of what's happening. Uh, and and I, a little bit of the political side. This is a great example of you can be for someone and not for all their actions. I support Governor Stitt. I think overall he does a phenomenal job. He's wrong in this lawsuit. This lawsuit was about compacts that were made with tribes that allowed sports books, so it expanded gambling without going through the legislature. We already have two Oklahoma Supreme Court cases directly on point, and now we're trying to overturn Oklahoma law with federal law. Uh, the AG is right on this. Again, this is not going to be a big fight between Governor Stitt and the legislature on this one, too, but I think it's time to move on. That's not something you can do. Okay, so let's do just what happened number two, which is the Senate came back, the special session is still going on. The Senate came back, what, what, is, what just happened? <laughs> here's, here's what happened. I am so ready to be done with special sessions, as I'm sure you the citizens are too. Uh, what happened is they overturned a veto that extends our tribal compacts one year. Still gives this governor time to work with our tribal partners to come up with agreements that are good for all Oklahomans. Um, the House is going to come back in on Monday, tomorrow, and I think you're going to see us do the exact same thing. We're going to have this override done. We're going to close down the special session, which is what needs to happen. Uh, we don't need to be in session uh, as little as possible. And uh, I think we're, we're moving forward with a plan where we're telling everybody, hey, we have a year, negotiate what's best, but we got to recognize our tribal citizens, our tribal partners, we're, we're excited to have them here, and we need to work with them. All right, your analysis of what just happened, number two. Well, we talked about this last week, that there was going to be a special session. Senate came in, did what we expected, uh, overrode the veto here. Expect the House to do that tomorrow as well. This actually has to deal with a tribal compact that deals with tobacco. And one of the things that I'm not sure we're really talking about in all this is Oklahoma still ranks super high in tobacco cessation. We have a lot of our citizens that smoke. We have a lot of our young people that smoke. Lost in all of this, is that we need to do something to lower tobacco rates in the state of Oklahoma in order to increase our health rates. Um, that needs to be part of this conversation. That won't be uh, in special session tomorrow, but it's something that I think we should continue to talk about. All right, when we come back. The past week of the State Board of Education threatening to lower the accreditation for Tulsa Public Schools, political experts here in Oklahoma say education has become too political and the focus needs to be on the positive things happening in the state. Here's part two of Your Vote Counts. And welcome back to Your Vote Counts. There was some drama in education, as there seems to be a lot these days. Secretary of Education has resigned. There was a big SDE meeting this week talking about Epic and Tulsa Public. There was a whole bunch. Un unpack it for us. Yeah, so here's what's so frustrating. What we should be talking about is how we have the highest per pupil funding in the history of the state, how we get the largest single one-year increase in education in the history of the state, more money to education in the last seven years than the last 27 years combined. It's moving in a phenomenal direction. We need to be focusing on outcomes. And instead, what we're talking about is people showing up in cosplay at the State Board of Education meeting. It is ridiculous. 
here's what's going on. There is a 0% chance, Tulsa, I know there's some issues, Tulsa Public Schools, State Board of Education, there's a 0% chance that they will not continue to be a school district. What we've got to find a way to do is focus on what we're doing right and raise all of education. But it's very frustrating to do all the work we did and all the headlines. are, are it's, it's a clown show. And the people showing up acting like idiots, not moving things in the right direction. It's, there's sort of a young and a restless tone to some of this lately. But your thoughts about what is happening with education in light of all the drama? Yeah, well, look, the State Board of Education meets once a month. And it just met this last week. And there was a lot of drama there. Part of the problem is, is politicians have made education political. And now education has become political. That does not help our children and our families. Look, as a father of two kids that are in Oklahoma City Public Schools, we're about to start school here in two weeks. And what I want elected officials, including those that work at the State Department of Education to be focused on, is what are we gonna do to have the best outcomes for our kids? How are we gonna make sure that we have uh, teachers in all of our classrooms. We right now have a huge shortage among teachers all across the state, not just in the urban areas. That needs to be the focus. We have got to figure out a way to get politics out of education and do what's best for our kids. And back to schools right around the corner, <laughs> kids. All right, so, you know, most time we spend on state issues, but there's a, a couple of cities, Oklahoma City and Tulsa, where one mayor who is in, talking about an arena, an open seat coming up in Tulsa, things are happening there. So. Mayors have to work with the state legislature and the governor and the executive branch. Your thoughts about what's happening in those two towns? Yeah, look, there is some exciting things happening in Oklahoma City and Tulsa, and all Oklahomans should be proud of that. The mayor here, David Holt, in Oklahoma City last week, State of the City, talking about a new NBA arena in downtown Oklahoma City. I think that is going to be a home run for Oklahoma City going forward. It is really going to put us continually on the map. Tulsa, some really exciting things taking place in Tulsa, and they're going to have a mayor's race coming up. Their mayor, who's done a fabulous job, G.T. Bynum, has decided to move on. They're there's some exciting new people. Uh, one that I served with, Monroe Nichols, who's already announced that he's running for mayor of Tulsa. That's going to be a really fun race to watch, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of commentary on it. You know, that arena, when you think about it, well, the Brooklyn Dodgers, well, there are no Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> There's a lot of history into what's about to happen there. Yeah, so crystal clear as I know it to be, we must build a new arena. We need to keep the thunder. It's good for all of Oklahoma. Big things happening in Oklahoma City and some really phenomenal things happening in the city of Tulsa. You know, that Tulsa mayor's race is one the entire state needs to watch. Mayor Bynum's done a great job, but you have everything from Commissioner Keith, rumors we keep hearing politically, maybe getting to that race. She'd be a very strong competitor. Uh, Representative Nichols, who I served with, would be is going to be a strong competitor. Senator Rader, Dave Rader, maybe keep your eye on that guy. I'm, I'm hearing maybe. It's going to be fun to watch, and we're going to follow it right here on this show and talk about what's going Going on in Oklahoma City with the Thunder Arena and what's going on in that Tulsa Mayor's race. Yeah, next week the Houston Oilers and Baltimore Colts fans will be here to talk about the arena. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, thanks for watching Your Vote Counts. See this again on your website slash Your Vote Counts and follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Threads.